All right, welcome into the Fantasy Six Pack 2023 Fantasy Baseball Team Previews. I am Jason. You can find me on Twitter at JRBex. I'm joined by JP. You can find him on Twitter at Dap Scout. First of all, go ahead and do us a favor. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're going to get great fantasy content like this all year long. And if you want to get access to award-winning advice, rankings, and more, that's available at Fantasy Six Pack. You can sign up for a membership today. And that's at fantasy6pack.net slash plans. Use promo code F6PMLB for 15% all of our options that we have for memberships. Um, and if, if you're like me and you need more customizable settings for your fantasy baseball league, then you need to try out Fantrax. You can create an account today at fantrax.com forward slash fantasy six pack, and you can see what you've been missing. Um, Fantrax to me has one of the best player pools, um, especially for the deeper leagues and, you know, these, if you're you know, playing some deep leagues or some deep dynasties, uh, Fantrax is the place for you. So you can definitely go ahead and check out Fantrax. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to be doing the 2023 Fantasy Baseball Team Previews. And today we're going to be doing the Colorado Rockies. Let's go ahead and uh, jump right into the starting lineup. We got the Jonathan Daza, Daza leading off, followed by Chris Bryant, followed by Ryan McMahon. Hitting fourth is CJ Crone. Fifth, Charlie Blackman. Sixth, we got Brendan Rogers, followed by uh, Sean Uchard. And then ninth is Elias Diaz. And then hitting ninth is Ezekiel Tovar. Right now, when you look at this lineup, it's just a lot of, uh, it's not a whole lot of flashy names here. I think right now, um, I think the most intriguing name is Chris Bryant, um, spoken from a, from a Cubs fan. Um, one thing, you know, he was hurt last year, but we did see, you know, a little bit of, of what we can get from out of Chris Bryant, right? High average, high on base, um, the power. We just have not really seen that power, um, you know, since his you know early days with the Cubs when, when he's you know winning MVP. Um, but I just don't know, you know, especially you would think in Colorado you, that the power would really take off. We saw a little bit of some glimpses of it last year. Um, then got injured. It'll be interesting to see if you know if, he, if one full season in Colorado what those power numbers look like. Um, and then, you know, other than that, you know, CJ Crone, you're going to get a ton of power with. Those are probably, um, you know, the two main options in this lineup. Um, one intriguing name, obviously, is the Ezekiel Tovar. They've come out and said that he's, you know, going to be their everyday shortstop, which is kind of a, a, interesting because one thing Colorado Rockies do not do is, you know, play their uh, prospects, or if they do, it's after it's too late um, and it's kind of fizzled. Um, so that's, the Tovar is an interesting one. But um, when you look up and down his lineup, you know, who's someone that you might be targeting or interested with? Well, I mean, Tovar, right? <laughs> First and foremost, I, I I absolutely want Tovar on my team. The, the guy looks incredible. Uh, but then again, I'm I'm enamored with his prospect status. He hit the ball really hard uh, when he was up. Uh, he looks like he has speed. And of course, he's in Colorado. I mean, anytime we see a hitting prospect pop up in Colorado, right? We immediately, like, everybody's like, wow, we got to get this guy. The, then the rest of this, right? Uh, Charlie Blackman, I have in a lot of leagues. He's easy to get as kind of your fourth outfielder, um, and he's consistent. I don't know if this is going to be his last season or the second to last season, but you're going to get, you know, if he's healthy, 15, 20 home runs, high average. It's He's a boring kind of, you know, again, a fourth, fifth outfielder, but... I, I love having Blackman in my lineup, and a lot of times he gets he gets dropped. Brendan Rogers is somebody who, you know, comes with a high amount of kind of prospect pedigree, and I expected to see a lot more than what I've seen before uh, with him. So this is somebody who I'm definitely going to be looking at as well because he definitely has the ability to stay in the lineup because of his defensive skills, but he hasn't hit very well. And because of that, I'm really wanting to see, you know, will he be able to, you know, become that fantasy impact player? Is he just going to be, you know, kind of a glove first defensive player and not really produce anywhere else? So that's somebody who I've, again, will throw as a bench piece in and, and really interested to see what Brendan Rodgers plays. Because again, he has a bat, he plays in Colorado. He's going to be interesting for me on my offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I think the Blackman's a good call that, you know, He's starting to age a little bit here, but you're going to get that great on base and the power still there. And if he plays in Colorado, half his games are in the best, you know, hitter friendly park there is. So 
I'll, I'd be taking Blackman as ADP right now is 292. He's a great fourth or fifth outfielder. I mean, all day, uh, right. but not That's someone cool. that I'd be you know targeting as, as when you're starting outfielders. Right. No, absolutely not. Let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, starting rotation here. Uh, starting off, we have Herman Marquez, followed by Kyle Freeland, and then followed that by Jose Urania, Austin Gomber, and then rounding out is Connor Siebold. Um, to me, this looks like the same rotation that's been there for the last, you know, three, four, five years. Not a whole lot of difference here. And uh, in my opinion, I'm not touching any of these guys. I always, one rule I usually try to follow is don't touch any certain pitchers um, in Colorado when half their half their game starts um, are in that high altitude in that high uh, ERA park. I'm just not you know, I'm touching any of these guys. Um, I thought at one point Austin Gomber might have been worth it. Um, he was my, that centerpiece of the Arenado trade. He just has not lived up to those expectations. Um, I mean, Herman Raquez is great for strikeouts, but again, if you can, you know, weather that like, you know, over four ERA. Um, but other than that, I mean, other starting rotation, is there anything that you'd be targeting? Uh, I'm trying uh, to understand why you couldn't talk more. So I didn't have to talk as much about the starting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I know. I mean, it's always, it's been like this forever, right? Since, you know, Hampton came over from the Braves and thought he could change Colorado and we thought it could change with the humidor. You just want to avoid this altogether. If you have to right? maybe Kyle Freeland, uh, and German Marquez. Okay. But you're going to blow up your ERA. <laughs> and then you have, it has to work in, weekly or da more daily lineups where you have to make sure they're maybe not playing. You got to, got to be on top of it. You got to make sure who they're playing. You got to make sure they're not playing in Colorado. Just don't do it to yourself. There's other areas in your life to worry about. Like how many cookies you still have, you know, from Girl Scouts or something like that. This is not where you want to stress. Just avoid this altogether. Unless again, German Marquez is your like, ninth starting pitcher in your rotation okay but other than that no nothing I did. yeah <laughs> yeah and, and consensus agrees i mean their ace german marquez right now has an adp of 269 so everyone you know everyone kind of knows that you know stay away from this starting rotation as, right. as best as you can obviously in deeper leagues you can't but if you can at all costs stay away from the uh the rocky starting rotation right let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, bullpen here got the closer daniel bard setup man is Pierce Johnson, the Nelson Lamette. Uh, the mid rotation guys are Lucas Gilbreth, Justin Lawrence, Brent Suter, Nick Mears, and the long right now is Jake Bird. Um, kind of similar to the third rotation. I'm trying not to target too many of these uh, pitchers in the Coors field. Um, Daniel Bard has proven, though, that he can close games for them. He, is, he was their closer last year, does get some saves. Uh, I think you can get a little bit more away with it if you're only pitching one inning. You know, it's not white near and dear to blow up your bull, uh, your ERA. But again, if I can, I'd stay away from this um, this bullpen just, just based on the fact that they got to pitch after games in Coors Field. The Nelson Lamette is a little bit intriguing for a setup man, especially if you need, if you need holds. Um, he's kind of a fail starter, but has that strikeout capabilities that you're looking for in your you know setup men, high leverage guys. But what do you think? What do you about this bullpen? So I get I get paid to talk about this stuff, uh, but I am trying desperately to come up with something really interesting to say about this other than don't. Um, you know, Den Lamette was somebody who hurt me so many times when he was with the Padres. <laughs> you broke my heart, Lamette. You broke my heart. Uh, he's got this stuff. He just can't even stay healthy at all. Uh, the other part is, right, Barrett is interesting, and he is a closer – and he's somebody that has shown he can close games in the, with the Rockies, but how many games are they going to win? And when they do win, is there's just too much there. Baird, fine. If, if you missed out on all the closers and you need like a third closer or something in a saves only league, absolutely. But again, this is just not something that I want to attack in any form or fashion. It's, it's just hard to kind of find that piece. The, because I want to give people that are listening at least, you know, kind of a couple, you know, areas to kind of look at, right? Brent Sutter is somebody, and Nick Mears is somebody who I could look at in a holds league because they're going to be put in situationally and somebody who might not be exposed to Rocky Stadium that much, right? So, Core Stadium. So, again, 
Suter and Mears are, would be somebody who I'd go after to look at like limited damage uh, type situation and, and just try to get some holds. Yeah, I mean, a little bit with the closer's role, the, the Daniel Bard, right now he's got an ADP of 229. So if, again, if you miss on those, you know, those closers, those closer runs, um, he, you know, yeah, I think he's someone you could target. He did have 30 plus saves last year, but I don't know if that's sustainable no. in this with this team. And look, that's that that's important, right? If you're in a saves only league, 30 saves is huge, uh, especially with some of these other you know bullpens that we've seen, right? Where we don't have a legitimate closer role. So you're right. I should have discounted it that much. 30 plus saves. If you can get that, that's a phenomenal. You just have I to think- then build your rotation. You have to build the rest of your staff around the fact that you need to make sure that your ERA is going to be in check, your whip's going to be in check, et cetera. Look, Baird wasn't bad last night, but you're going to have those rocky blow-up games. So you just got to be sure to just construct everything else around that. Yeah, I think I want to reiterate, I don't know if you can count on Bard being 30-plus save guy no, right. in a yeah, year yeah. in and year out. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> right. of course. I think last year may have been more of an outlier than anything. Um, you know, obviously he's going to get like, you know, I can see like 20, 25 on a good season from Bard, so. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap up the uh, 2023 fantasy team preview for the Colorado Rockies. Um, if you haven't already done so, like I said, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're going to get great fantasy content all season long. Um, until next time.